War and peace starts in the Russian city of St. Petersburg in 1805 as Napoleon's conquest of Western Europe is just beginning to stir fear in Russia. Many of the novel's characters are introduced at a society hostess party, among them Pierre Bezukhov, the socially awkward but likable illegitimate son of a rich count, and Andrew Bulkonsky, the intelligent and ambitious son of a retired military commander. We also meet the sneaky and shallow Kuragin family, including the Willy father, Vasily, the fortune hunter Anatole, and the ravishing daughter Helen. We are introduced to the Rostovs, a noble Moscow family, including the lively daughter Natasha, the quiet cousin Sonia, and the impetuous son Nicholas, who has just joined the army led by the old General Kutuzov. Russian troops are mobilized in alliance with the Austrian Empire, which is currently resisting Napoleon's onslaught. Both Andrew and Nicholas go to the front. Andrew is wounded at the Battle of Austerlitz, and though he survives, he is long presumed dead. Pierre is made sole heir of his father's fortune and marries Helen Coragina in a days. Helen cheats on Pierre, and he challenges her seducer to a duel in which Pierre nearly kills the man. Andrew's wife Liz gives birth to a son just as Andrew arrives home to his estate, much to the shock of his family. Liz dies in childbirth, leaving Andrew's devout sister Mary to raise her son. Pierre, disillusioned by married life, leaves his wife and becomes involved with the spiritual practices of Freemasonry. He attempts to apply the practices teaching to his estate management and shares these teaching with his skeptical friend Andrew, who is doing works to help reform the Russian government. Meanwhile, the Rostov's family fortunes are failing thanks in part to Nicholas' gambling debts. Nicholas is encouraged to marry a rich heiress despite his earlier promise to marry Sonia. Nicholas' army career continues. He witnesses the great peace between Napoleon and Tsar Alexander. Natasha grows up, attends her first born, and falls in love with various men before becoming seriously attached to Andrew. Andrew's father objects to the marriage and requires Andrew to wait a year before marrying Natasha. Natasha reluctantly submits to this demand and Andrew goes off to travel. After Andrew departs, his father becomes irritable and cruel towards Mary, who accepts the cruelty with Christian forgiveness. Natasha is attracted to Anatole, who confesses his love. She eventually decides that she loves Anatole and plans to elope with him, but the plan fails. Andrew comes home and rejects Natasha for her involvement with Anatole. Pierre consoles Natasha and feels an attraction towards her. Natasha falls ill. The year is now 1812. Napoleon invades Russia and Tsar Alexander reluctantly declares war. Andrew returns to active military service. Pierre observes Moscow's response to Napoleon's threat and develops a crazy sense that he has a mission to assassinate Napoleon. The French approach the Bulkonsky state and Mary and, and the old prince are advised to leave. The prince dies at just as the French troops arrive. Mary, finally forced to leave her state, finds the local peasants hostile. Nicholas happens to ride up and save Mary. Mary and Nicholas feel the stirrings of romance. The Russians and French fight a decisive battle at Borodino, where the smaller Russian army inexplicably defeats the French forces, much to Napoleon's dismay. In St. Petersburg, life in the higher social circles continues almost unaffected by the occupation of Moscow. Helen, in a letter, seeks divorce from Pierre in order to marry a foreign prince. Distressed by this news, Pierre becomes deranged and flees his companion, venturing alone through Moscow. Meanwhile, the Rostovs pack up their belongings, preparing to evacuate, but they abandon their possessions to convey wounded soldiers instead. Natasha's younger brother Pitya enters the army. On the way out of the city, Rostovs take along the wounded Andrew with them. Pierre, still wandering half crazed in Moscow, sees widespread anarchy, looting, fire, and murder. Still obsessed with his mission of killing Napoleon, he saves a girl from a fire but is apprehended by the French authorities. Pierre witnesses the execution of several of his prison mates and bonds with a wise peasant named Platon Karatev. Nicholas's aunt tries to arrange a marriage between Nicholas and Mary, but Nicholas resists, remembering his commitment to Sonia. Mary visits the Rostovs to see the wounded Andrew and Natasha, and Mary grow closer. Andrew forgives Natasha, declaring his love for her before he dies. General Kotosov leads the French troops back towards Moscow, which the French have finally abandoned after their defeat at Borodino. The French forces the Russian prisoners of war, including Pierre, to march with them. On the way, Platon falls ill and is shot as a straggler. The Russians follow the retreating French and small partisan fight ensues. Pitya is shot and killed. Pierre finally realizes his love for Natasha and marries her in 1813 and eventually have four children. Natasha grows into a solid frumpy Russian matron. Nicholas also weds Mary and resolves his financial problems. And the book ends predicting a very optimistic future for these characters.